Hello MCU fans! Today we're going to look at the fact that Thor Love and Thunder's placement on the Disney Plus timeline has only continued to divide between where Disney Plus says the timeline should be and where fans say it ought to be. So let's dive right in and look at how Thor Love and Thunder has only widened this ever-growing gap. Now, we need to start by looking at Disney Plus's monthly breakdown for Phase 4. I do realize that Disney Plus doesn't include months. In fact, it doesn't even include years. But it's pretty easy to derive them by looking at the different movies and TV shows. Uh, so notice, first of all, that I did include a couple Phase 3 things in here because they're so important to the timeline. You're going to see how basically the entire timeline really is anchored on these two movies. Also, it's worth noting that Far From Home isn't even on Disney Plus on everybody's locality. However, certain localities do have Far From Home playing, and that's why we know where Disney Plus is going to place it. On the other hand, No Way Home unfortunately isn't on Disney Plus anywhere. So this is just a guess as to where Disney Plus will place it for sake of discussion, but it kind of makes sense they would place it right after Far From Home since it picks up right after the movie. So let's look at each of these and try to figure out how we know where the months and the years all fall into play. Now, Far From Home is, is really the easiest. We know it is during summer vacation, in fact, the very beginning of summer vacation for Peter's uh, uh, junior year. In fact, it's, his, it's the redo of junior year. And already, though, there's something interesting to point out. While we know it is from June to July, it includes a very important cultural event, the Festival of Lights or the Signal Festival, which in 2024 would occur in October because that's when it occurs every year. So right off the bat, we have a movie that includes a cultural event, but doesn't place it where it happens in the real world, i.e. it's not in October, it's in June to July in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm only pointing that out because that is going to come into play as we look at some of these other things, that Marvel isn't necessarily concerned with when cultural events happen in the real world. All right, so what else can we place? Well, we know that Endgame is in 2023, but we can firmly place it in October because in Far From Home, Betty mentions that everyone returned from the blip eight months prior. Uh, so if you back up eight months from June, therefore you get October. So that's why these two movies in particular are so important to anchoring all of Phase 4. So the rest really falls into play pretty easily. Uh, Loki is completely outside of time other than the very beginning, but because it is clearly triggered by the uh, time heist in an end, uh, endgame, that's why it's placed right after endgame. What if isn't even in the timeline, at least for the main uh, 616. Instead, it's the multiverse. However, it was triggered for the most part, by the end of Loki. So that's why it's commonly placed next. Now, WandaVision, we know that that's just a couple weeks after Endgame, so we can place it in November. We know Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, is six months after Endgame, because that's mentioned in the series. So we can put it in April, and it goes until June, because it's a couple months long. So we can place that April to June 2024. Uh, we can place No Way Home, which we know starts right after Far From Home and extends all the way through December because uh, the final scene, he's, of course, swinging over New York uh, during Christmas time. And then I'm going to jump forward, but I'll explain why in a second. We can place Hawkeye because we know that Hawkeye is a Christmas uh, movie uh, and therefore it would be Christmas of 2024. Now, these eight are pretty much in agreement by everyone. Obviously, Disney Plus feels pretty firmly this is where they go, but also the fans agree because, honestly, there's just nothing controversial about these placements, and they really kind of help a further anchor Phase 4. However, the remaining seven have been the source of much disagreement uh, between fans and Disney Plus. So let's look at each one of these in a little more detail. And by the way, I do have a full video on all seven of these more controversial items in case you want to look at it even more. I'm going to go through this very quickly. So Shang-Chi. Marvel would be placing it, it appears, in July since it's after the start of uh, No Way Home. So why would they do that? Well, there is a bus scene, um, the, the awesome fight scene, and there's a poster that has a July date in it. So okay, that works. That would fit with July. So why then do fans have an issue with this? Well, that's because the movie centers heavily around the Qingming Festival. Uh, that's the only way they can get into Talo. So the Qingming Festival in the real world happens April 4th through 5th in the year of 2024. So therefore, that would mean Shang-Chi must be happening 
you know, late March, early April. However, again, Disney Plus and Marvel place it in July. So we can already see where fans are starting to disagree with the timeline. Now, I will point out, though, we already noted that Far From Home references a cultural event, the Festival of Lights, in a totally different time frame than when it really happens. So this would mean Disney Plus now is saying both of these happen at a different time than their cultural events. Interesting, huh? Then we move to Eternals. Now, Eternals we can place in October because if we look at the movie, there's an awful lot of cold weather clothing throughout, and there's also a pumpkin on display down there in the uh, lower left image. And it looks like it might be carved. It's kind of hard to tell. No matter how much you zoom in, it just starts to get really grainy. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be a late October or early November. That's not so much the controversy. The controversy is 2024 because Ajax, quote, doesn't really work if Eternals happens in 2024. If you remember, she said five years ago, Thanos erased half the population of the universe, delayed the emergence, but the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. Well, five years before 2024 is 2019, and we know that Infinity War happened in 2018. In fact, it was earlier in 2018, May around May timeframe of 2018. So that quote doesn't work if it's in 2024. Well, or does it? I mean, sometimes we round to a nice figure. Maybe that sounded better than saying six. Or maybe what she really meant to say was over five years ago or around five years ago. But the bottom line is neither of those are what she said. She said five years ago and said it really definitively. So you can understand why fans are saying, no, this can't be in 2024. But nonetheless, that appears to be where Disney Plus has placed it because it's well into 2024. Next, we have Multiverse of Madness. Now, that one uh, we can place in November of 2024. Why? Well, because if you look in the movie, on the left, we have um, No Way Home. And notice the trees, uh, the leaves are pretty well turned and falling. And then on the right, we have Multiverse of Madness. And the trees look almost exactly the same. So apparently... Multiverse of Madness is happening, you know, during No Way Home, because we know the final scene of No Way Home is him swinging over New York and Christmas. But there's, it's really hard to, to, to see these two images together and not think that they're in very, very close proximity. Um, so why do fans have an issue with this? Well, there's a quote, which actually was attributed to Sam Raimi, but it doesn't appear like he actually said it. There's a Fandango article, which includes quotes from Raimi, but this part, it's unclear whether Raimi said this or whether they just included it. However, the quote is, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness picks up roughly a few months after the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. You can find the article, it's still out there on the web. But you can see why this is going to confuse fans a bit, right? I mean, this article is clearly saying it's a few months after No Way Home, not during No Way Home. But again, Marvel seems to have placed it during because they placed it before Hawkeye, which is in December. So what does that mean? Well, it means that Shang-Chi, Eternals, and Multiverse of Madness, in Dis Disney Plus's time frame at least, all happen during No Way Home. <laughs> wow. During the runtime of No Way Home, which is July to December, three movies happen. Wild. But it, it works. Again, it's not that this is wrong, and I want to keep stressing as we go through stuff, you've probably seen it's not like one of these has to be the answer. There are explanations either way, but um, but yeah, you can see why fans have disagreed with some of this. All right, so now we move to Moon Knight. Moon Knight's interesting. We know it's after Hawkeye, so that puts it in 2025. So let's see why we're saying April. Well, the timeline is based upon the, the current exhibit at the museum. Notice in the picture there, uh, April 22nd is when the exhibit starts. And then we get some pretty strong hints that it's during the beginning of the exhibit because Stephen goes in and complain that it's wrong. He said that not all the gods are represented. Well, Stephen is obviously brilliant and would have noticed it immediately rather than weeks into the exhibit. So very likely this was the beginning of April or, or mid-April. So that's why an April 2025 seems to make sense. However, why don't fans like it? Well, because... If we look at a quote from uh, Muhammad Diab, who was uh, one of the major forces behind uh, making Moon Knight happen, um, he said, the Marvel world is so complex. We had a date, we had a year, but I'm not going to say it because it doesn't matter anymore. So that immediately made fans go, wait, wait, wait. This guy 
had a real firm plan for when Moon Knight happens, I want to know what that is. Well, if, they, if you examine the phases of the moon and align them to the days of the week that the episodes of Moon Knight happen, you can actually find the only time post-Endgame that the phases line up with the days of the week, and that is the month of June of 2024. Wow. And again, there are videos out there that go into great detail on this, but the bottom line is fans have said, hey, I don't, you know, I don't care when Disney Plus placed it. I want to know when uh, Mohamed Diab wanted it placed. And theoretically, that would be June of 2024. Very cool. So again, is Disney Plus wrong? Not necessarily. If they're saying, in fact, uh, uh, Diab is even saying it doesn't matter anymore. But to fans, it does. Okay. So then fans can place it at a different place than Disney Plus does. It doesn't mean Disney Plus is wrong. It just means people have different opinions. Ooh. Then we move to She-Hulk. Now, I'm putting She-Hulk in May of 2025, but it still could move around a bit. We know it has to be after Moon Knight, and that's pretty much all we know for now. Um, well, and before Miss Marvel, which we'll get to in a second. So let's look a little bit at the complex timeline with She-Hulk. So a couple key points. We know the Hulk sustained an injury at the end of Endgame to his arm, which was October 2023. We know there was a cage fight between Wong and Abomination, and according to Disney Plus, at least, that's in July of 2024. At the end of the Shang-Chi movie, um, we know that Banner was still wearing an, uh, the sling. His arm was still injured, and now he was back to human form, though, by the way, which they explain how he was able to do that, and that was through his inhibitor, which you can kind of see there on his left arm. Um, so we know that, that he was wearing the inhibitor, had changed back to human, and still had the injured arm at the end of Shang-Chi. Then we know from She-Hulk that they flash back in the first episode to, she says, two months or around two months. So if we were to go with the main part of She-Hulk happening in May, then this might be February, maybe March. And notice, there he is, still wearing the inhibitor, still with the broken arm. And of course, then that leads to the car accident and him spilling his blood on Jen, her, her becoming She-Hulk, and then the two months worth of training that gets us to the present time of um, a She-Hulk. And then finally, the cage fight video is released to the public in um, the main time of She-Hulk. So let's go again with May of 2025. Obviously, this had a lot of people scratching their heads. Why on earth was this video, which was recorded back in July of 2024, only hitting the news in May of 2025? Well, at least the most logical explanation, it seems, is whoever recorded the video did it illegally. I mean, it's an illegal fight club, so they wouldn't want people releasing video about an illegal fight club. So probably somebody snuck the video. And then they had really had no reason to release it to the public. In fact, they might have filmed multiple videos. I mean, why release it? Who cares, right? However, in May of 2025, that's when suddenly Jen Walters, as She-Hulk, is representing Blonsky, trying to get him out on, on parole. Now, this is news. This is big news. That whoever had that video might have said to themselves, wait, 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 I can sell this. Oh, man. So now it gets released. I guess my point is, it's legitimate to believe that there might have been a, a, a gap in time between when it was filmed and when it was released. Now, Disney Plus would you know, have that be almost a year, but we know it has to be at least two months, right? Because we know that the end of Shang-Chi, he was still Banner with the arm sling, and we know then there's at least two months of training that Jen goes through before we get to present day in She-Hulk. So if there's at least a two-month gap, couldn't there be, you know, a nine or 10 month gap? Sure. Sure. I mean, it, again, you, you hear this theme, right? It's not that Disney Plus is wrong. It's that Disney Plus has a position that could also be a different position. It could be that this appear, occurs earlier. However, there is a reason why the later in the timeline makes more sense. If you remember, Wong places She-Hulk after No Way Home because he says, I'm not erasing any more memories? Not again. It's very messy, believe me. So many believe he's referring to the memory erasing spell in No Way Home. Now, granted, he could be referring to other times when the spell was used. I mean, you remember Dr. Strange even joked about, uh, do you remember the party we threw? And he's like, no. And he's like, see, the memory spell works. So it could be Wong is referring to a different time, but it certainly seems like he is referring to the memory erasing spell in No Way Home. 
Additionally, if you follow his outfits, he was wearing one thing in Shang-Chi, the same thing in No Way Home. Then he moves to kind of like the superhero outfit in Multiverse of Madness. And then there, when he appears in She-Hulk, he's got that new outfit on. Now, outfit chronology isn't necessarily conclusive proof, but it's just one more thing to make you think, yeah, She-Hulk is happening after No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness. So is Marvel's placement correct to put it this late in the timeline? It can be. It can, I mean, it works. And that's the most important thing. If something just flat out doesn't work, we need to question it. But this this placement works. It just is a little head scratching. Uh, okay, then we move to Miss Marvel. And Miss Marvel, we know, is after She Hulk. Um, and I'm placing it in September because if you look closely in the episode, there's all kinds of hints that it's early in Kamala's school year. Uh, first of all, she's in her junior year. She hasn't done college admissions yet. She hasn't done the SAT yet. Uh, uh, Kamran, who becomes very important in the series, is transferring in, which you wouldn't do at the end of a school year. Uh, there's posters for choosing the homecoming queen. That makes you think beginning of school year. And the computer screen, there's one quick frame where if you pause it, you can see that it shows her Q1 grades. They're talking about the first quarter grades. You wouldn't talk about those if it was the end of the school year. And then lastly, the show's writer and producer said that it's approximately two years after Endgame. We know Endgame was October 2023, so September of 2025 would make sense. However, one issue is this is the third time that there has been a cultural reference in a series which may or may not be happening at the right time for when it happens in the real world because they reference the Eid celebration and it's the second Eid, they make that really clear, and the second Eid celebration of 2025 would be in June, which would now place it at the end of Kamala's junior year, not the beginning. So what do we do with this? Well, there seems to be a ton of clues that it's the beginning. So that's why I believe that it is firmly September 2025 and that this is in fact the third time where a cultural uh, event is featured in a movie or a TV show, but is not when it happens in the real world. And I'm just going to throw out maybe a crazy in-universe theory. Maybe after Endgame and five years of the blip, they reset some of these dates. They changed the dates. They said, you know what? The original dates are so messed up now because of the blip that, that that's why they're happening at different times than we're used to them in the real world. Crazy idea, but the bottom line, it doesn't matter. It seems like Marvel just doesn't care when stuff happens in the real world. All right, and so finally, we get to Thor. Thor, which has, like I say, further created this distance between what people accept for the Disney timeline and what they think it really should be. I think a lot of people were surprised when Thor was so late in the timeline. However, if you look at some of the things in the movie, it does start to make some sense. So, first of all, uh, the weather it seems chilly, so a fall setting would make sense if it was if it's a September or October time frame. And in fact, one of the few images of the movie that looks like it's spring or or vibrant summer didn't actually happen in the movie. This is the deleted scene, uh, which they showed it in the trailers and and it's widely found on the internet, but it's not actually in the movie. So really, most of the movie is. Is, is a fall setting, or it could be uh, an early spring setting, but it would be a time frame when people are wearing clothes. But certainly Marvel placing in October would work, or maybe a late September. Also, it should take probably a long time for the tourism to kick in after Endgame. So the, the images on the left here, th this is Endgame. This is how it looked. You see Hulk and, and Rocket down there. It was pretty dreary. And of course it was dreary. Remember, Thor was totally depressed. Uh, no one was running Asgard. It seems highly unlikely they were considering tourism because, number one, everybody was still dealing with half the world being gone, plus new Asgard was just a hot mess. Then and we see in Thor, boom. I mean, major tourism, multiple, not just one, but multiple cruise ships, uh, tons of people in, in town. It just seems like that would take quite a while to kick in. Um, I mean, I guess it's believable it could be earlier in the timeline, but by Marvel placing it so late in the timeline allows for this to pick up, for, for the cruises to come in. Also, you know, this was just an Easter egg, but let's throw it out there. In Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, at the beginning, there was a ticker that showed down below political turmoil continues in New Asgard. Interesting, right? 
I mean, the fact that now they've placed Thor Love and Thunder so far after that means that whatever this political turmoil was has been resolved. They've, they've fixed it, um, and, and maybe that led to the tourism kicking in. But, uh, you know, it, it, again, we're just trying to figure out, does it make sense for it to be so late in the timeline? And actually, this would fit. This would fit well. Uh, also, by it being later in the timeline works because Darcy appeared obviously in WandaVision, had a real important role in WandaVision, and that was, we know, was right after Endgame. And honestly, while the series may only have lasted a week or two, the fallout from that, with Haywood being arrested and Darcy being a witness, she was probably in some court cases to figure out what to do with that guy. I'm going to bet she was wrapped up in the Westview situation well past the ending runtime of WandaVision itself. But then, of course, she shows up in Thor Love and Thunder to support Jane, which I'm imagining she did a lot. They were best friends. She was probably there for a long time with her. So some separation from WandaVision in the timeline is good. Uh, it would mean that, that Darcy is more freed up and is able to spend extensive time with Jane. Uh, Thor needed some time to get his god bod back, right? I mean, granted, Asgardian metabolism is probably pretty good, but still... Uh, you know, he was very out of shape and very depressed. And so he had to move mentally to a different place and then physically to a different place. So again, late in the timeline might well make sense. The farther away from Endgame, the better. Um, then we've got the breakup. Now, this is kind of interesting. So using Disney Plus's placement of, of an October, maybe late September, uh, Thor said it was eight years, seven months, and six days since the breakup. That would place the breakup probably in around a March timeframe of 2017. Um, does that work? Well, the only thing we know for certain is Thor was off world. Obviously Hulk was too, but Thor was off world during Civil War because Ross mentions, do you happen to know where Thor or the Hulk are? And Civil War was from May to June of 2016. Now we don't know whether Thor came back to, to Earth after, he may well have. In fact, according to Disney Plus's timeline, he did, and it may have been that he just came back, found that note, and then left again. Because he seemed to be unaware that the Avengers had broken up. Certainly Hulk was unaware uh, when he showed up in, uh, when Hulk showed up in Infinity War. But, uh, but yeah, th this works, and there's nothing that says Thor couldn't have come back to Earth again briefly and then just left. So yes, the important point is this works with Disney Plus's placement. Now Groot's growth rate patterns could, could cause issues, but th th honestly, they're just such a mystery, it's hard to tell. But let let's look at this a little bit in detail here. So at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 timeframe, which was October of 2014, he's of course Baby Groot. Then at the Infinity War timeframe, which is May of 2018, he's Teenage Groot. Well, in Thor Love and Thunder, I mean, it's hard to tell for certain, but he kind of seems still like he's teenage Groot. So that could be an issue of, you know, how has he only grown, I mean, I mean, barely at all, let's be honest, in such a long time frame. But keep in mind, Groot was blipped. So he was gone, literally, from May of 2018 to October of 2023 for a five and a half year period. So thus, the time frame between when he came back from Endgame to the time frame that Disney Plus is saying that Thor occurred is only two years. Now still, it's two years, so it might still ask the question, why has Groot not changed more? But keep in mind, he's basically a living tree. So who knows, maybe he can actually control his own growth rate and force his own you know, spurts in growth. So maybe he's gonna size up a bunch by the time of the next Guardians of the Galaxy uh, it'll be the holiday special will be the next thing coming up. So it's not that this doesn't work. Uh, it, it could be a concern. It could be an issue with where Disney Plus has placed it. But I also think it can work. Uh, probably the most interesting thing in Thor Love and Thunder is we know that she has a blood test on April 30th. We don't know what year, and the 2020 date up there is irrelevant. That's probably when it was bottled, um, but, but is not when this is happening because that was during the blip, and she was gone during the blip. We know Jane was, was blipped. So the question really is, which April 30th did she do this blood test? Now, in the movie, she mentions a six months ago line, but honestly, I've listened to it two or three times, and I can't tell if she's saying it was six months since she first discovered she had cancer, or six months since this discovery that she's not getting any better. But either way, after 4.30 is when she heads to New Asgard. So that's important to keep in mind, but I think it works uh, with where Disney Plus has placed Thor.
So bottom line, uh, they have him, uh, you know, well into um, the, the end of 2025, uh, September, October. We know it's just after Miss Marvel is all we know for sure. So that's basically uh, Disney Plus's breakdown. Now, the reason that people actually have an issue with Thor, in addition to maybe um, some of the reasons I've already discussed, is they want it to be closer to Moon Knight. And I can understand why. I mean, I think theoretically there was going to be a tie between Moon Knight and Thor, where some of the gods don't show up in Moon Knight because Gore killed them. And by the way, that's still possible. We don't know how long Gore was out killing gods. If he was killing them for six months, then he could have killed some of the gods that appeared in Moon Knight. But admittedly, some of the fan issue with Thor Love and Thunder is they just want it to be closer to Moon Knight. So there you have it. Uh, again, this is the monthly breakdown of Disney+. Plus. Now let's look quickly at the fans' monthly breakdown for Phase 4. Now we can immediately put in the eight uh, shows and movies that aren't controversial. These are the ones that, again, I, I have not heard any fans take disagreement with. Now then the fans place Eternals much closer to Endgame. And I'll be honest, of all the placements in Disney+, Plus, this is the one that is the most head-scratching to me that they place it in 2024. So, you know, in November, December, maybe even a January, February of 2024, but the point is, Eternals fans place it much closer to Endgame. We already discussed the fact it was Shang-Chi. They place it around the Qingming Festival, which is end of March, beginning of April. Now, Thor Love and Thunder, this is interesting. Because the fans want... It to be close to Moon Knight, and in fact, a little before Moon Knight, potentially, um, it works out that way if you look at the phases of the moon. So the th same theory that was used with uh, Moon Knight's placement uh, fits uh, Thor around 2024 uh, of May. Um, I guess a couple concerns I might have with this is it gets it really close to Endgame. Um, you know, now we're only six, seven months out from Endgame and that tourism really had to kick in pretty fast. You know, Thor had to lose his weight really fast. And then as we discussed, Darcy is really tied up in Westview. It's unclear when Jane would have found out she had cancer, but it could make their stories not work alignment wise. But let me be clear. I don't think any of those stop it from being in May. Um, just like I think Marvel's placement in late 2025 works, I think this works. Uh, there, there are issues with both, but none of them are, are, are backbreaker issues. None of them are, 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 are going to make it impossible. So that's Thor. Then again, Moon Knight, we discussed earlier, by, by placing it around the phases of the moon, puts it in June of 2024. And now it's right by Thor Love and Thunder, where fans would like to see it. Uh, She-Hulk, I don't know if anybody's figured out exactly where they think it should be. I'm placing it here because most fans that I've heard want it to be closer to Shang-Chi. Now, this gets tricky because of Multiverse of Madness and No Way Home and seemingly Wong's appearance being after those. But I did also mention, you know, his wardrobe is not a definitive solution to where it is placed and he could have been mentioning an earlier memory spell. So it is not impossible that She-Hulk could be um, you know, closer to Shang-Chi in the timeline. Um, Multiverse of Madness, we discussed the fact that that uh, had that one quote that said it was a couple months after uh, No Way Home. And if so, that would put it in February. And then we discussed the fact that Miss Marvel, if it is when the Eid celebration is occurring, would put it in June of 2025. So, uh, Again, not every single fan has this exact timeline, but I would say that this is the places people put things if they don't agree with Disney+. Plus. Now, it's worth pointing out that Multiverse of Madness and Miss Marvel have been ones that I've heard more and more fans moving towards a Disney Plus timeline, agreeing that, okay, that quote wasn't really what Sam Raimi said, and I see how Multiverse of Madness can fit closer to No Way Home. And people have also agreed that Miss Marvel might make more sense at the beginning of her junior year. So I'm going to move those for the moment here just to say those two people seem more willing to say, all right, Disney Plus, maybe it was right. However, these five, man, they're the ones that people are, are willing to die on the hill for. And again, I don't think any of these five are wrong. I think they work. But I also think Disney Plus's work. And I guess one of the real concerns as, I, as I'm wrapping this up is I see headlines like these on videos and articles, and I just, I don't know, can we really definitively make statements like this? Can we say that 
you know, there's massive uh, timeline mistakes, that Disney Plus is wrong, that Disney Plus broke the timeline, that the fan timeline is better, you know, that Disney Plus, again, gets it wrong. I, I, I understand these type of headlines can increase clicks <laughs> and increase views, but at the end of the day, did we really see any of the Disney Plus entries that were just wrong? I mean, we may disagree with them, and Eternals being the shakiest one on the Disney Plus timeline. But are they wrong? I mean, can you really just discount the whole timeline? I don't know. I just don't think these type of headlines are productive to having a good discussion where we're really trying to get to the root of the issue. But that's just my opinion. It's just not my nature to be that, that controversial, I guess. So end of the day, I think the fan timeline works. I don't have any real issues with this. And I think the Disney Plus timeline works. I don't have any real issues with this. And I think any combination of the two, as long as it doesn't break continuity, that also works. You know, maybe you, you think Shang-Chi is right in Disney, but you think Moon Knight is wrong on Disney. You know, there's, there's all kinds of combinations. That's what makes this so much fun, is there, there isn't a definitive answer. Now, granted, Disney Plus would say theirs is the definitive answer. I get that. But it is kind of cool that you can mix and match these things a bit. That's what's just so much fun with the Marvel Universe. So I guess the real question is, what's going to happen from here? Are we going to get closer or not? You know, is this going to continue to be our face as things show up in Disney Plus? And are we going to continue to have disagreements and, and uh, you know, get farther and farther a gap? Or uh, as we move into phase five, and this is what I'm hoping, will the timeline settle down? You know, phase four was rough because of the pandemic, was rough because of so many things. But I really think going forward, it's going to be more clear and we're going to have less, you know, disagreements between fans and Disney Plus. But most importantly... Don't let any of this timeline stuff keep you from enjoying the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's awesome. We've got so much good content. Um, yeah, not everything's perfect. I get that. But still, there's a lot of good content. So uh, I hope this video has encouraged you that, you know, we're not that far off, really, between fans and Disney+. Plus. And at the end of the day, they can both be right without either being wrong. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out some more videos. And of course, let's all continue to enjoy as the timeline takes us down the road of the ever-evolving, ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.